I couldn't find any videos on YouTube showing how to use email verification with Superbase and Flutterflow. So I did it myself. This is the simplest, most straightforward and effortless way to use Superbase Auth with email verification. Let me show you how right now. Alright, so I'm currently in my Flutterflow dashboard and over here I have the base project over here with the home page with a simple logout button with the logout action already defined as well as a login page with the sign in action already defined and it also has a register page where we will we can create account and last but not least we also have the verify email page where the user can click on this resend email button and it will send another email to their email and if you're interested in following along with this tutorial you can clone this project which will be down in the youtube description down below all right so let's get into it right now so the first thing that we have to do is we have to go over to settings and integrations over here and we have to link our Superbase project to our Flutterflow project. So over here I've created a base Superbase project and now we can go to project settings under configuration we can go to API and we'll just copy and paste our project URL into our API URL and we also copy our anon key over here. Now we can click on get schema and you can see that the errors are now gone. And now we will have to add some custom actions, some custom code in order to implement email verification. But don't worry, you can go down to the YouTube description below and click on this link to bring you to my GitHub over here, which is the sign up with email dot dot file. All you have to do is just copy and paste all of this code over here and we'll go under custom code and we'll add a custom action and then we'll replace all this code with the ones that you have copied just now now we will name this sign up with email make sure that the name is exactly like this so that is exactly the same as the function name over here and now we can click on save action and that's it that's all the custom code that we need but in case if you're interested I'll briefly run through what the code does so our piece of custom code over here will take in three arguments, which is the email of the user, the password of the user, as well as the confirm password field that the user types in. So our custom code over here first checks for a condition where the password is equal to the confirm password text field that the user enters. So basically this is just a simple check to check if the user has typed in both passwords correctly. Next over here, this line instantiates the Superbase client so that we are able to use the sign up function which Superbase already provides. Next, these lines of code over here basically uses the Superbase client to call the auth.signup function which basically tells Superbase to create a new user in our Superbase database. And if the user has been successfully created, then it will just return now which means that there are no errors and the user has been successfully created. If there are errors, however, it will go over to this line and it will just return the error message to us so that we can inform the user about what error it is. Alright, so that's basically the function. And now we can go and implement it back in our widget tree. So going back to our register page over here, we can click on our create account button and we can add an action. And the action that we want to add is to our custom action which is our custom action of sign up with email. So we have to pass some arguments over here. We have to pass our email argument, which will be our widget state and our email text field over here. Ignore the name for now. This should be email, not phone number. But yeah, this is the email text field. For our password, we'll go to widget state once again and we'll choose this password text field. And lastly, for our confirm password, it will be widget state and confirm password text field. And for the action output variable name, since our custom action will output an error if any, we'll just name it error. Next, we have to add a conditional action to check whether any error has been returned. So we can add a single condition over here and we'll select the first value to be our action output and it'll be the error action output. So for this condition, we want to check if there is any error. So we can select this is set and not empty. This means that 
if there is an error, it will return true. If there isn't, it will return false. So let's first deal with the case where there is an error. When there is an error with the user sign up, we just want to inform the user of the error. So we can search for a new action, which is information dialog over here. And we can give it a title such as sign up error. For the message over here, we want to inform of the user of the error message. So we can search for action outputs. We can select the error action output that we got from our first custom action over here. So this just informs the user of the error. And next, we'll deal with the case where there is no error. So where the user has been successfully created over here. So for this action, we now want to navigate to. So we can search for navigate to. And now we want to navigate to the verify page for the user to be able to verify their account. And that's it for our register page. Now we can go over, go over to our verify page. Let's say the user did not receive their email or there was an error transmitting the email to the user's account, email account. So the user has an option to click on this recent email button as well. And it's actually very simple to implement this. There's no need for any additional code. All we have to do is we have to recall our sign up with email custom action once more. And Superbase automatically sends another email to the user's email. So we can add, open the action flow editor for this resend email button and we'll add our custom action once more. And we also have to pass our email password as well as confirm password fields once more. But we don't have access to that in this verify email page. So what we can do is that we can go over to this verify page level over here and we can add a few page parameters at the top right over here. So we can add the email, which is a string. We can add the password, which will also be a string. And lastly, we can add the confirm password field, which will also be a string. And don't remember to, and don't forget to click on this confirm button over here. So now that we have these page parameters, you can see that we have some issues over here. And these errors are because we just defined some required page parameters, but we did not pass them. We did not pass these parameters when we navigated to our verify page. So all we have to do is we have to go to our register page, our create action button, our create account button, sorry. And we'll go back to our navigate to verify page action. And you can see that now we can pass certain page parameters. So all we have to do is we can just pass our email which will be our widget state, our email text field over here. For the password argument, it will also be widget state and it will be our password text field. And lastly, for the confirm password argument, it will be under widget state and it will be this confirm password text field. So now that we have passed these arguments over here, we are down to three errors and these are due to our custom action in our verify page. So going back to our verify page, we'll just click on our resend email button, go back to the action flow editor. And now we have access to the email password as well as the confirm password fields through our page parameters over here. So we can just link these three up. Yep, and that's all we have to do for our verify email page as well. Now, one final thing that we have to do is we have to configure our Superbase project to be able to send the verify email page. And now one final thing we have to do is we have to go over to our Superbase project and we have to configure our email that we want to send. So we can go under authentication in our Superbase project and we'll go under providers. We'll go under the email of provider. And you can see that usually we toggle this confirm email option off, but since we now want to verify our user's email, we'll leave it on for now. So now we can go to our email template over here and under confirm sign up. And this is where we can customize the email that will be sent to the user. So you can click on preview over here to see how the email will look like which contains the title, confirm your sign up, some body text, or follow this link to confirm your user, and a link for the user to be able to click 
which will redirect the user back to our app. So you can change all of these over here. For example, you can change it to, hey there, confirm your account. And you can change this to click this link to confirm your account. But make sure not to change this link over here, this href field, as this will be the link which will send the user back to our app or our website. However, you can change this over here to confirm your email now. We can click on save and then we can look at the preview. That looks good. And one final thing that we have to do is we have to go to URL configuration and we have to change this site URL so that it redirects back to our site or our mobile app. So to find that site URL, we can go under settings and integrations in our Flutterflow project and we'll go under app details. And if you're launching a mobile app, you can find the site URL over here in the URL scheme. So for mobile apps, specifically not web apps, the site URL will be this plus this over here. So this is for mobile apps. So it'll be this. Then you have to copy this as well. So it'll be colon slash slash and this over here. So this is the site URL for mobile apps specifically, which is under app details, routing and deep linking. However, for testing purposes, since Flutterflow only tests in the web browser, what we have to do is we have to go for platforms over here and we have to enable the web. And once you have enabled the web platform over here, we can go over to web publishing and you can find your site URL for the web app over here on the site URL. So what we can do is we can copy this site URL and we'll copy and paste this into our site URL right here. We can click on save. One more thing you have to do is that you have to actually publish it on the web in order for us to be able to go to this website when we are testing. So just some explanation about the site URL. The site URL or the base site URL basically leads to our home page over here. And inside our email template over here, the dot confirmation URL basically leads to our site URL, which will lead back to our home page in our Flutterflow app. So that's basically how the domains work. All right, so after waiting a few minutes, you should see that your website has been successfully published. So now that's actually all we have to do in order to enable email verification in our Flutterflow apps. And now we can try testing it out ourselves. All right, so Tesma has just loaded up and let's try creating a new user in our register page. So for this email, make sure that you use an existing email that you have access to. And for the passwords, let's try giving a password that does not match. And you can see that it returns us with an error of passwords do not match. Now let's give it the right password. And let's see what happens when we try to create an account. And unfortunately, we get this error over here for email rate limit exceeded. So why this problem occurs is because Superbase actually has a rate limit to the number of emails that it allows us to send to our users. And this rate limit is extremely low of only three per hour. So how can we deal with this problem? Well, we can use something called a custom SMTP. And the one that I like to use is called Resend. Resend is an amazing SMTP service which can be integrated seamlessly with Superbase and it is also a completely free tool to use which it allows you to not only send more emails to your users but also allows you to connect your own custom domain. If you'd like to learn how to use Resend as your custom SMTP with your Superbase projects and Flutterflow apps, you can click on this link up above on the top right hand corner. So because of this error, I'll quickly integrate Resend into my app. See you in a bit. All right, so I've successfully integrated Resend as my custom SMTP in Superbase. And now if we try requesting to create a new account once more, you can see that now the rate limit error no longer occurs and we are brought to the verify email page. 
So let's just check our authentication table and our users table. You can see that a new user was created and you can see that it's waiting for verification as well. Now, if you go and check your email, you should see that a new email has popped up. Indeed, a new email has popped up and this was the email format that we gave. So if we try clicking on this link now, we are brought to the home page and we have been successfully verified, which you can check in your Superbase table if you refresh as well. So refresh. You see that we, our user is no longer waiting verification and has been successfully verified as well. So verifying a user's email is great, but what happens if the user forgets their password and wishes to reset it? If you'd like to learn how to implement a forget and reset password function in your Flutterflow apps, check out this video over here. You don't want to miss it. Alright, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.